first, and now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter and the 13th verse. Lord, bless us to exercise this the greatest love of all, which is charity. Our introduction, letters to the Hebrews, Hebrews 12 and 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptable with reverence and godly fear. We are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. My God, so we want to always show reverence and respect and godly fear to our God. This is how we serve God. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom, hallelujah, this is how we receive that kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us be grateful, have gratitude, have grace, whereby we may serve God. We want to serve him, saints acceptably with reverence and godly fear. The instructions in Hebrews 13, 1 through 3 are about life in the community. This idea flows from Hebrews 12 and 28. We are to serve God with reverential respect for him, exemplifying his love in our everyday life. Again, our gratitude for what Christ has done for us Cause us to spread it to one another. Thank God for these Sunday school lessons that help us to come up to the mark that God has called for our godly living. Here's outline. A plea for brotherly love. Because God has given us, forgiven us. Because God has forgiven us. We can forgive others. And we are in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Let brotherly love continue. Love continue in difficult situations. Failure to ask for forgiveness when we sin and our refusal to forgive someone who hurts you. My God, we don't want to be that way. We want brotherly love to continue, even in difficult situations. Remember the Sermon on the Mount? Jesus taught us to ask God to forgive us our debt, even as we forgive others our debtors. So we must forgive. We must forgive those that uh, hurt us or sin against us or uh, we don't want to be that person that refuse to forgive someone who hurts us. Is brotherly love shown to only those you know? Let's examine ourselves in this lesson. Are you partial in showing love to only certain people? We want to have that forgiving spirit that we can let go and allow God to heal our hurts Sometimes it may take time, but God is able. We want to make sure that our record is clean and we want to get go to heaven. We don't want God to not forgive us when we ask for forgiveness. So surely we ought to forgive others as they for, as God has forgiven us. That should be one of our main goals. Let it go and forgive. Former, former fearful situation. Hebrews 13 and 2. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Hospitality is a hallmark of Christianity. It was a common practice to provide a meal 
and a night's lodging to traveling strangers. It allows God's people to show grace and kindness to those who may not know God. <laughs> this reminds me of a situation that we had a relative who passed away in Chicago, and my daughter and I uh, wanted so badly to go to this funeral, mainly because we didn't know any of these relatives, and uh, we wanted to get to know some of our first cousins uh, on my father's side. And when we got there, uh, we were told before we left the house that uh, one of the elderly, older ladies told us, well, yes, you are family, come on, and we will put you up. Uh, only for, you know, we only wanted to stay overnight. However, after we got there, we don't know what changed, but a note was sent back to us that said there is no room. <laughs> I have to laugh about it now. There was no room in the inn. And we were left stranded to find a place to uh, stay that night. There is no room in the inn. Can you believe it? We were in church <laughs> at the funeral. And someone sent us a note and said, there is no room at the inn. Do you find it hard to entertain strangers? Does it depend on how they look? Do your heart go out to the less fortunate, homeless, foster children, orphans? Saints, we must have a heart for all strangers. Uh, when I say all strangers, those that God have put in our pathway and laid on our hearts to be compassionate to, we are to show that compassion to others. And who knows, as the scripture says, we may be entertaining angels unaware. When you give, uh, give money to those that are on the streets, we want to be led by the Lord. However, God is able to lead and guide us to those that we really need to help and to provide help for. Lord, help us, help us, help us. Help us to be aware uh, of strangers and to entertain strangers uh, because it, you never know. We just might be entertaining angels unawares. And all I can say is, Lord, help me to be able to uh, follow the leading and the guidance of the Holy Ghost and to give when he prompts us in our hearts to give. Hospitality, those persecuted for their faith in Hebrews 13 and 3 it says, remember them that are in bonds as bound with them and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Do you sympathize with those that are persecuted, unjustly mistreated? for their faith. My God, sometimes I can be looking at a movie and when I see people that are mistreated and persecuted, tears just begin to flow down my eyes and I have to tell myself, this is just a movie. We want to sympathize, sympathize even the more with those Christians that are going through, that are being persecuted, unjustly mistreated, for their faith in Christ. In the first century, sometimes people withheld help for fear of identifying themselves with the prisoners and suffering similar punishment. Thank God we haven't been through anything like that as of yet. Have you been in situations though where your friends did not want to be identified with you if you were unpopular with leaders or certain caliber of people. If you had to take a stand against something, did your friend that was talking with you at first decide, no, they don't want to be identified with you when it comes to taking a stand against those things that are right or wrong? We are to be hospitable, those that are persecuted for their faith. Us to our second outline, love is the basis of our faith. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 through 3. 
In this epistle, Paul teaches that spiritual gifts are ineffective without charity or love. My God, my God. Genuine love is only possible when we love God first. So we want to keep that in mind. Spiritual gifts are ineffective without charity or love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding breast or a tinkling cymbal. Ineffective. It is more important to act lovingly than to be able to speak all the heavenly or earthly languages. Without love, the ability to communicate is useless. It will be meaningful, meaningless. So saints, we are to ask God to help us to love one another, to be motivated by love. We want to show genuine love. My God, it's the only possible uh, way when we love God first. It's only possible, in other words. It's only possible. Genuine love is only possible when we love God first. When we have the love of God in our hearts. We don't want to do anything without love. It would profit us nothing. It profiteth me nothing. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity I am nothing and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity it profiteth me nothing more important Paul is describing this agape love, a commitment of the will to cherish and uphold another person. Agape describes our willful and deliberate decision to treat others with the utmost care and concern and allows us to esteem the best interests of our brother or sister above our own. What does this really look like? And we're going to examine that. It profiteth me nothing. So all of our good deeds, our good works, how well we can speak our spiritual, or say our gifts that we're gifted with, it would profit us nothing. Spiritual gifts would profit us nothing if we have not charity, if we have not love. On the word the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost why teach on love although the Corinthians were corrupt they live like they live like a Corinthian that was a phrase or a saying back in those days which meant that they that was equated with one who lived immorality immoral immorally it was equated with one who lived immorally my god an immoral lifestyle the same true is the same is true in this immoral 21st century many do not know what true love is it is no wonder that the concept of love have been corrupted and the new corinthian christians as well as people today struggle to understand what true love mean the love language eros the sensuous or erotic sexy form of love that's called eros philia a brotherly affection or friendship love and the agape love describes our willful and deliberate decision to treat others with the utmost care and concern and allow us to esteem the best interests of our brother or sister above our own so we see that we have been introduced to three different love language 
in this world, but that agape love is given to us by the Holy Ghost. That's the only way that we can really demonstrate the agape love, the God kind of love, the love of God, which is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. He is the one that give us that agape love. It doesn't um, stop with just our brothers or our sisters or, or our loved ones. That agape love goes much further. It goes to the point where we love our enemies. Love is the proof of our gifts. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. We're going to talk about love in action. And it's with this new covenant, a new heart will I give unto thee. He's going to write it in the, on the table of our hearts. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Charity. And let's look, let's look at this action, this love in action. It suffers long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Let's examine this love in action with our own life. What these Sunday school lessons do for me, it helps me to examine myself. Let's examine our love. If God's love is in us, we will be patient. So we have to ask, ask ourselves, are we patient? Do we have patience with one another? Patient with those who annoy us. <laughs> Annoy us and hurt us. Are we patient with them? Lord, help us, help us, help us. Do we resent or dislike when someone else makes progress? Do we have resentment toward them when they're making progress in life? Do we parade ourselves, lift ourselves up and brag on ourselves? Help us, Lord. Can we work anonymously behind the scene or do we always have to be up front? Do we always have to be in control? Do we always have to have it done our way because we feel like our way is the best way? Are we arrogant and self-focused? It's all about you and yours. My God. Lord, help us. Do we behave rudely? Hmm. Do we behave rudely? Are we ill-mannered or brash, hasty and impatient? A person who loves does not just speak his or her mind, but minds his, his or her speech. We ought to be careful what we say with our mouth. Be mindful of what we say with our mouth. The Bible tells us to be swift to hear, but slow to speak. Lord, help us, help us, help us not to behave rudely or, or ill-mannered or hasty. Let's examine our love. Let's see where we fall short in our love. Our love in action. The characteristics of love continues. Are you touchy or irritable? No one can say anything to you without you snapping or, and become ill-tempered? Do you think evil? Concentrate on the bad things. Help us, Lord, help us. Do you store up memories or keep an account of any wrong you have received? Help us, Lord, help us. Do you put away hurts of the past instead of clinging to them? Only God can help us and heal that broken heart. Love desires the best for others. 
and does not derive personal satisfaction from the failure of others. We're examining ourselves. Love rejoices in the truth. My God. So these are the characteristics of love. Let us examine our own selves. And I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that we will fall short in some of these areas. And God brings these lessons to us so that the Holy Ghost can help us, that we can pray and ask for forgiveness. And God will, I said God will, get everything in us that needs to be put in us and take everything out of us that needs to be taken out of us. He is that type of God. And this is why we can thank him. We can praise him for the Holy Ghost that shed abroad in our hearts. He will bless us to love in the proper way, to love impartially, to love those that hurt us, to love our enemies, to go beyond. It may not be when you think it should be. It may not even be when you want it to be. But God has a way of touching your heart and causing you to right those things that are wrong. He's able to help you to even uh, uh, pray with the person. He's even able to help you to speak with them and talk with them and let them know that God has healed my heart. You don't have to even tell them, but they will know. When you reach out to them, they will know that God is working in you because you don't hold grudges. You don't keep an account of anything that people have done to you. And I just praise God for it. I praise him when he blesses me to right those things that are wrong in my life. God's love does not, it does not give up. Love never tires of support, never loses faith, never ceases to hope, and never gives up. My God, most of us can bear things and believe things and hope things, but not all things and only for a while. Hallelujah. Saints, let's examine ourselves. Do, can you just bear all things all the time? Believe all good things all the time. Hope for the best all the time. We said most of the time, this is from the commentator, most of the time we can, but not all things and only for a while. Only for a while. But the greatness of God's love is that it keeps on bearing, keeps on believing, and keeps on hoping and it never gives up, up. And that same love that God has, he grants it, saints. May not be overnight, but he grants the same love to us by the power of the Holy Ghost. He helps us when we see that we're slacking in an area. He helps us to come up in that area. Isn't God good? He's a blessed God and he's, he wants us to make it. He wants us to love like he loves. And he gives us everything we need to accomplish that purpose. Our line. Love is permanent. Our last outline. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 13. Love and the real world. Our world is full of hurting people who in turn only know how my God, only know how to hurt other people. And we definitely don't want that spirit. That when we uh, are hurting, then we'll turn around and hurt someone else. Lord, help us. Our world's media is full of corruption. We are truly seeing the last days right before our eyes. Thank God he does not change. He has prepared us through the blood of Jesus Christ and has given us a new and divine nature. Praise the name of the Lord. Through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we are now capable of loving the way that God loved us. We are capable, saints. And he helps us. He prepares us. He conditions us 
he reproves us. This capacity to love one another must be exercised. We are growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to be like him. That's our, uh, that's our earnest desire is to be like Jesus. We want that same mind of Christ. Grant us, Father, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We want the mind of Christ where we can love just like he loved. Love in this real world that we're li living in, this hurting world that we are living in. Make us available to love, oh God, in Jesus' name. We want to exercise that love. Other gifts will no longer be needed. In 1 Corinthians 3, 13 and 8, charity never faileth, but rather there be prophecies, they shall fail. Rather there be tongues, they shall cease. Rather there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. That agape love, saints, will never fail. It will endure forever. This is the dispensation now of the Holy Ghost and the manifest, manifesting himself, the Holy Ghost, manifests himself through his gifts for the body of Christ. He said to each is given and he gives each and every one of us gifts for the body of Christ, for the church. However, at the end of this age and in heaven, these gifts will be unneeded and inappropriate. We won't need them anymore. They're just for this particular dispensation. They will cease. They will cease. But let's find out what's permanent. Mature love sees the outcome in advance. Verse 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I became mature, when I became an adult, I put away childish things. Lord, help us. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. This, saints, is a reference to how children view the world in comparison to how mature people, grown-ups, view the world or view life. So true, children only see and hear the now. They only pay attention to what they hear right now and what they see right now. Mature Christians are beyond the here and now. They see visions, they see the future outcomes, they see things in advance, they think things through. Let's look at 1 John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We are maturing, we are growing, we are putting on the fruit of the Spirit. We're putting on love. We're allowing the Holy Ghost to shed, be shed abroad in our hearts, loving our enemy, for we shall see him as he is. Saints, we shall be like him. So we want to grow in grace. We want to grow in love. We want, want to become mature saints of God. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Our slide reads, the greatest of these is love. The gifts are temporary. Paul let us know that love is the greatest. 1 Corinthians 14, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. So he hasn't done away with the gifts. Again, 
the gifts are for this church age, this dispensation, this time, but that more permanent gift, my God, the more permanent, the greatest gift that a man can ever receive. We need faith. We need hope. But the greatest of these is love. We're to desire. We're to follow after love. Love is above all. Giftedness is not the measure of maturity. The display of love is. It's not how many gifts you have, not how well you can do, not how well you can sing, not how well you can articulate. articulate. It is the display of love in your life. People are reading us. And we want to display the love of Christ in our life, especially with strangers. Faith, for without it, it is impossible to please God. We need that faith. He said, now abideth faith. Hope, we, hope is thou in God. It says, we must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of him that diligently seek him we need hope but in matthew 22 verses 37 through 40 it tells us jesus said unto them to him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart the greatest of these is love and this is a commandment that we love god with all of our heart and with all of our soul, my God, and with all our mind. But he didn't stop there. He said, this is the first and great commandment. He said, but the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Saints, that's great love. That's that love that is going to abide forever. That permanent love. And we're asking God to, Help each and every one of us to grow in love, to let the love of God be shed abroad in our hearts, to love our enemies, even as Christ loves us.